is 16 years old, and like most 16-year-olds, she has big hopes and dreams. She wants to finish her education, pass her exams. She wants to get married one day, have children. But above all, Lois really wants to be a radio presenter one day. But the first 16 years of Lois's life haven't been easy. Because like 74,000 adolescents living in Zimbabwe, Lois is HIV positive. She was born with HIV. But back when she was born, she defied the odds because back then it was commonly believed that if a child was born with HIV, they wouldn't survive past their second birthday. But she did. She was well, she was healthy. But at the age of 10, her world turned upside down. As she lay next to her sick mother, her mother passed away with TB, secondary to HIV infection. Just one week later, 10-year-old Lois watched as her brother also passed away. Lois's father had died when she was a baby, and so Lois was moved to stay with extended family members, and the deaths of her father, her mother, and her brother were never spoken of again. Lois did well. She grew up. Um, but just a couple of years later, she also became unwell. She was diagnosed and treated for TB, but she was also confirmed HIV positive. Now, fortunately, at that time, antiretroviral medicines were arriving in Zimbabwe. While ARVs are not a cure for HIV, if they are taken, adhered to, every day, they are able to suppress HIV into such low levels that the immune system is protected. This prevents opportunistic infections and prevents AIDS-related deaths. But they have to be taken every day. So the arrival of these ARVs in Zimbabwe, as many of you will remember, in a country that had been devastated by the AIDS epidemic in the previous 10 to 15 years, the arrival of these medicines offered new hope. People were no longer dying, but they were living with HIV. Children born with HIV, like Lois, were now growing up. So Lois started on treatment, and... Um, she, at that point, she was referred to Jandiri. Um, when Jandiri and the clinic started supporting her to adhere to her medication. But despite this progress, UNAIDS tells us that while we were seeing a rapid decline in AIDS-related deaths in children and adults, the same could not be said for adolescents. Young people like Lois were still dying. So why? What was so different about adolescents? How many of you are sitting there thinking, well, adolescents are difficult, they're challenging, they're stubborn. I have adolescents at home, so I get that. But what is it about adolescence? Adolescence is a period of rapid growth, physical growth and development, social and emotional change. Studies tell us that the adolescent brain continues to develop right through adolescence into early adulthood. An adolescent's world is constantly changing, it's dynamic. Adolescence is a period of self-discovery, exploration, increasing independence. Their worlds are changing. And adolescents are trying to make sense of that world, how they think about it, how they feel about it, and importantly, how they respond to it. This is normal adolescent growth and development. Now add in a diagnosis of HIV. Adolescents living with HIV face an extraordinary challenge to navigate the normal path of adolescence whilst also managing the implications of, a, of an HIV diagnosis. And for our young people in Zimbabwe, this often means coming to terms with the way that it came to be living with HIV, coping with the loss of one parent, two parents, siblings, as for Lois, living with the burden of keeping their HIV status a secret for fear of what happened if others find out. Living with stigma and discrimination in every aspect of their lives, whether that's in the home, in the community, in school, in church, on the combi. Fears and anxieties around their own future, their own mortality. And every day, when putting that ARV tablet in their mouth, being reminded that they are HIV positive. These are the realities of so many young people's lives when living with HIV. These are the realities we need to remember 
when we start them on ARVs and we ask that they take these every day for the rest of their lives. And these are the realities that have informed my work over the years. In 2004, I was working in a clinic just up the road, and I received a letter from a young girl called Simba Sai. In her letter, she wrote, we are so grateful for these ARVs. They've given us new hope. But the pills alone are not enough. We need a place as young people where we can come together, learn how to grow up with HIV, to cope, learn and share how we should cope with the issues in our lives. And above all, we're young people. We just want to hang out with people who understand each other. Yes, they had ARV treatment, but they were seeking another kind of treatment, a treatment for the loneliness, the fear, the anxieties in their lives. So we started a, a support group for six adolescents living with HIV. One of the young members, Amanda, she named the group Jandiri. She wanted to say, I may be HIV positive, but accept me as I am. And this name has stayed with the program ever since. This group was an immediate hit. Before the end of the year, we had 20 groups across the city of Harare, set up with the clinics, set up with the National AIDS Council. We added on community outreach, following up those children at home, providing them with additional training, and, uh, counseling and support that they needed to cope with the issues in their lives, all in partnership with the clinics. But another remarkable thing was happening. At a time of real silence around HIV in children, these young people were finding their voices. They wanted to speak out. They started moving around the country. They were writing their own books. The Ministry of Health and Child Care invited them to train doctors and nurses. And I'll never forget one young boy from Hatcliffe Extension, the joy on his face when he said, imagine me, of all people here, training doctors. <laughs> they were invited by the Ministry of Education to train teachers, Ministry of Social Welfare to train social workers. And they worked with families and caregivers to help them to better understand the needs of their children with HIV. At a time, as I'm sure we remember, of rampant stigma and misconceptions about HIV, these brave young people were stepping up, speaking out about their lives, and shaping the way that individuals, communities, and societies understood HIV, and importantly, how they responded to people living with HIV. But we still faced a big challenge. Adherence to ARVs, the medicines, among young people was still a problem. We knew we needed to do something different, something new. So we had an idea. We were already working with this amazing group of young people I've been telling you about. They had so clearly demonstrated that they wanted to do more for their peers. So together with the Ministry of Health and Child Care, we piloted the first training of 18 to 24-year-old HIV-positive peer counselors. We called them CATS, Community Adolescent Treatment Supporters. Their role being to... Um, provide adherence support for their peers living with HIV on antiretroviral medicine. It was immediately clear this could just work. Because these cats were born counselors. They were positive. They know the issues. They had such extensive insights into the, the psychosocial and complex evolving li issues in the lives of their peers. So, together with the Ministry of Health and Child Care and the Ministry of Social Welfare, and with tremendous support from our funding partners, we started to scale up this CATS program across the country. CATS are at the heart of the Jandiri program. Based in their local clinics across the country and supervised by a nurse and a counselor in the clinic, they work between the clinics and the communities, ensuring that children get tested, ensuring those that are HIV positive are linked to treatment and supported as they start on treatment. And they ensure that they are there to provide additional information and counselling peer-to-peer in a way that they each understand and supporting them through the issues they face as they're growing up. Let's go back to Lois's story. So Lois today is a grown young woman. She has been on antiretroviral medicines for 15 years. She's doing well. Her viral load is suppressed. It's undetectable. It can't be seen in laboratory tests. But the road has not been easy. Remember, Lois's world 
her reality was one of years of unresolved grief and loss that had never been addressed. Years of stigma and discrimination. Although at first she did well on treatment, and she enrolled in the Jandiri program, the clinic in Jandiri, and the cats were supporting her. She was attending support group, um, being visited at home. These problems don't go away. They are complex. And after several years, she um, stopped taking her medication. She was depressed. She attempted to take her life. The clinic in Jandiri enhanced support for her to get her through this process, to support her. She started taking her ARVs again. She did well. Again, a few years passed by, but like so many young people living with HIV, it got to the point when she had to make a decision, do I tell my boyfriend I have HIV? And like so many others, she felt this overwhelming fear of rejection if she was to disclose her status. So again, this was a difficult time for her. She stopped adhering. Again, we rallied round to enhance support for her. She began adhering again. And six years later, she's still adhering, doing well on treatment. We started the CATS program with 10, 10 young people as a pilot. Today, across Zimbabwe, there are 1,400 CATS who get up every morning and go off to the clinic, not as a patient, but as a highly respected, valued member of the healthcare team. Together, they are supporting 65,000 children, adolescents, and young people across the country. Our program data and research studies with research partners show that the CATS have resulted in improved uptake of HIV testing services, improved engagement in services, improved adherence to their ARVs, improved viral suppression, and improved psychosocial well-being among their clients. This is the work of young people. Over the years, we've adapted the program to the needs of specific groups of young people living with HIV. We found um, we've needed to adapt for those with disability, for those with TB, for those with mental health conditions, for those at risk of abuse and neglect, and for those who have grown up and now become mothers and fathers themselves. Young people in the Jandiri program have written their own songs, their own films, their own videos that have gone viral. They have written their own books, their own counseling tools that are being used across the country in all of the clinics. They have developed their own digital app that they use in their daily work. They, have, um, they use radio and TV and social media and print media to advocate for the needs of their peers. But they have also used their experiences to advocate for policy change, for improved funding and improved service delivery, not just in Zimbabwe, but beyond. This is Lois today on the right. She is sitting alongside President Trudeau of Canada, Melinda Gates, and Mark Dybul of the Global Fund. She's presenting with them at the fifth replenishment conference of the Global Fund, having directly participated in raising the Global Fund's funding that year, totaling $14 billion. And remember her dream of being a radio presenter? Well, here she is, as the co-host on the Jandiri radio show on ZFM every Saturday at 10 past six. On the left, this is Maxi, a former CATS, sitting next to the, um, the president of Côte d'Ivoire at a global conference with other researchers and academics speaking about the latest uh, pediatric and antiretroviral um, pediatric and adolescent anti antiretroviral treatment. This is Tandy, speaking at the United Nations Assembly, speaking about her experiences of sexual abuse and HIV and advocating for services for other young women like her. This is Tendai in the Democratic Repu Republic of Congo, sharing experiences from Zimbabwe in the Jandiri program as part of a series of meetings that the WHO are running at the moment, um, sharing lessons from Zimbabwe 
in 22 countries in the region. This is Rumbi, training healthcare workers in Kigali. Because Rwanda, like Uganda, Namibia, Iswatini, Mozambique, Tanzania, they are adopting the Jandiri program in their own countries. And second from the right, this is Phyllis, last month in Washington, D.C., again, a former CATS, speaking to policymakers, funders, implementing partners from around the world, reminding them that the pills alone are not enough. If we are to transform the lives of young people living with HIV, we need to also be investing in mental health services, social protection services. Young people in Zimbabwe are a true force. They have turned their experiences into real change for their peers, not just in Zimbabwe, but in the region and beyond. Across the continent, people are learning from this Zimbabwean model. But bigger than that, they're learning from young people and cats and just how much they can do for their peers through sustained, practical kindness and support. If we could invest in these peers, we have the potential to transform the lives of so many young people with HIV. ARVs were indeed a game changer. But with this model of peer support, we have the opportunity, the potential, to treat the loneliness, the fear, the challenges that young people face, which will improve, in turn, their adherence to these life-saving medicines, as well as improving their quality of life. If we really value and sustain the cats, the contribution cats are making, we have the potential to stem the failing trends in adolescent HIV. And that is a radical treatment. Thank you.